Well, it got cold last night for the first time. It went down to probably 19 degrees, and so I've started my first fire of the season. I have a bunch of miscellaneous footage from the season, and some of it's harvest stuff and from different times throughout the season. And so the focus of this video is just gonna be harvest and what I harvested this year, and you'll get to see the bounty of things that I harvested at various times throughout the season. This is a strawberry bed that I got going last, you know, two years ago actually, I planted it, and then last year I had a huge crop out of it, and this is the second year for it, and that's what I'm harvesting today. Well, this is one of my favorite things to do in the garden is harvesting carrots because it's always such a mystery as to how big the carrots are going to be and what they're going to look like. Same thing with potatoes. Um, this is an early, like a spring planting of, of carrots, which I don't usually do here because carrots seem to get carrot maggot flies and they, the larva or the little worms will tunnel through the carrot root and make them look really ugly but it seems like this year i didn't get any so i'm, I'm surprised uh just happened that i was like out here and i was like why not i've got extra space i'll plant some carrots and it turned out really good actually so i'm gonna look here and find where, where there might be some good carrots sometimes i like to try to just yank them and sometimes that's what happens so you have to dig around them this one actually is going to be ugly a great example but I did already harvest some before I decided I would do a little bit of a video and those ones look nice there's a good one look at that perfect carrot I have a little homesteading tip for you in processing tomato sauce. I've found in the past that 
I used a lot of fuel trying to boil down tomato sauce uh, because it has so much liquid in it. And so now when I get tomatoes in from the garden, I have indeter indeterminate like heirloom varieties of tomatoes. So I don't usually get like a huge volume of them at once. They sort of trickle in. And as I get them in, I cut out the bud scars and then I put them into freezer bags and I freeze them. And then I wait until I get enough in the freezer to make a batch of tomato sauce. And then I take them all out. I let them thaw out and the clear liquid tomato juice comes out of them. And then I just drain that off. Um, and so I don't have to spend all that time in boiling down the, um, the sauce and you end up with just in the bag, the pulp, the skin and the seeds, and you can put that through a food mill and then you get an already thickened sauce and you just, uh, cook that down for a little while. You don't have to take all of the moisture out of them. You don't have to take all of the liquid out. You want to keep a little bit of that in there and then boil it down. Of course that, liquid does have sugars in it and those sugars would get concentrated in the sauce if you boiled it down it's just this is a you know a faster way of doing it um, and conserves a huge amount of fuel and time see all that liquid that just actually kind of seeps right out of the bags both of these bags were just like Full to bursting with tomatoes and now they've shrunk down to just this size. Alright, it's already really thick. It's pretty thick sauce, but I'm boiling it down a little bit more and that should add a cooked flavor to the tomatoes to make it taste like more authentic sauce. And then I figure I'll just wait and when I use it, uh, go to use it, I will add the onions and the garlic and all the spices and herbs. Just gonna make a salted, thick tomato sauce now. This is a haul of pumpkins and watermelons and a couple of musk melons, but these were sort of an afterthought. We had tilled up some extra beds for the growers co-op and they weren't getting planted, so I just decided to plant some melons and pumpkins in there because that's what I wanted. And so I didn't really have to do much to tend them, just mulch them and then weed them a little bit. I'm taking a little break from uh, the foundation work and going to check out some of these watermelons that I harvested. So now I'm going to cut them open and see how they look. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Make a nice little snack. Sometimes I have trouble figuring out when to harvest watermelons and they tell you the like dry tendril nearby to the watermelon as an indicator, but it doesn't seem to work. So I've got this massive bed of sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes here and this started out as a project with Vic last year. Uh, he wanted to start a business selling them online and thought that this might be a good place to grow them and of course last year we started out uh, and it was the worst season we could possibly have had for getting sunchokes going. They grew about this tall because of all the rain that we had and didn't really do that much but make tiny, like a bunch of tiny little tubers. Uh, so it was less than ideal, but I kind of dug up what I could and, and replanted some of them in this bed. Um, and then of course this year we had an ideal season and they were already somewhat established, so they just went nuts. And uh, now I'm in the process of digging them up and kind of a big project, but you know, I always enjoy digging up tubers cause it's like this little treasure that you're digging out of the soil. You never know what you're going to find, but I'm finding a lot. There's some of a purple variety and some of uh, white varieties. Seems like there's a lot here, but you know that when you dig up 
Jerusalem artichokes, you can never get them all out of the ground. And uh, so I might have to deal with these for years to come. Well, this is the last thing I'm gonna harvest and it is cauliflower. And I've tied up these leaves so that they blanch. These are not self blanching varieties. And uh, we got that hard frost last night, like 19 degrees, maybe even lower. And uh, I don't think these are gonna grow anymore. So I'm gonna just harvest them. They're not huge, but it's something and I love cauliflower. But this is the today's harvest. There's actually a couple more heads that are tiny that I could harvest too. All right, well, thanks for coming on this little walk through the season. It was a pretty bountiful year for me. And uh, subscribe to my channel uh, right up here. And also visit my website if you want to, hardcoresustainable.com. And check out my playlist and other videos below. Uh, and keep on watching.